Hello. This video teaches a broad approach to examination of the elbow. In the clinical setting, however, a good history will help you to focus your physical examination. If the history and exam do not adequately explain the patient's symptoms, you may need to examine the neck and shoulder for a source of referred pain, or the hand and wrist as well. Pain characteristics such as burning, tingling, numbness, and radiation should alert you to the possibility of neurological involvement and prompt a cervical spine and neurological examination. For teaching purposes, I have structured the exam into inspection, palpation, range of movement, power assessment, and special tests. I will review some surface anatomy first. For ease of demonstration, I may switch back and forth from one elbow to the other throughout the video. There are three bony prominences at the elbow. On the medial aspect, you will find the medial epicondyle. This is a main insertion point of the common flexor tendon, which includes the pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, flexor digitorum superficialis, and the flexor carpi ulnaris. On the lateral aspect, you will find the lateral epicondyle. This is a main insertion point of the common extensor tendon, which includes the extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis, the brachial radialis, extensor digitorum communis, extensor carpi ulnaris, and the aconius. The point of the elbow is formed by the olecranon process. The epicondyles and the apex of the olecranon forms an isosceles triangle with the elbow flexed at 90 degrees. When the elbow is fully extended, these three processes form a straight line. Identify the medial and lateral paraolecranon grooves. The ulnar nerve is found in the median groove just behind the medial epicondyle. The olecranon bursa sits over the olecranon process. Just distal to the lateral epicondyle, you will find the head of the radius. This can be identified by putting your thumb over that area and supinating and pronating the forearm. You should feel the radial head slipping under your thumb. On inspection, look at the carrying angle. The elbow has a normal valgus deviation. You can look at this from the front or the back, with the elbow extended and the palm in supination. This is also known as the anatomical position. Imagine a line drawn through the mid-shaft of the humerus, intersecting with another line drawn through the middle of the forearm. The angle of intersection is the carrying angle. The carrying angle is a valgus deviation, and normally about 5 to 10 degrees in men and 10 to 20 degrees in women. The carrying angle is important so that we don't crash our hands into our hips while we are walking and also allows us to carry loads without having to abduct our shoulders. Continuing with inspection, look at the medial and lateral epicondyles as well as the olecranon process. Abnormal prominence of the olecranon can be found with posterior subluxation of the elbow such as in rheumatoid arthritis. Loss of the paraolecranon groove, particularly on the lateral side, may indicate a joint effusion or synovitis. Enlargement of the olecranon bursa can be seen in conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis and gout. If it is hot and red, think of septic bursitis. Also look for rheumatoid nodules and psoriasis on the extensive surface of the elbow. Remember to look at all sides and take note of any scars. Also look for muscle atrophy, such as at the biceps, triceps, and forearm muscles. And also look for flexion contractures or extension deformities with the elbows fully extended. As an initial part of palpation, feel for warmth at the joint and bursa. Posteriorly, palpate the humerus and triceps for bulk and tenderness, and move down to the olecranon process and olecranon bursa, checking for tenderness, fluid, and nodules. Continue down the extensive surface of the forearm. 
Just behind the medial epicondyle, you will find the ulnar nerve. You can appreciate this slipping under your fingers by flexing and extending the elbow. To check for an effusion, you can palpate the paraolecranon grooves, particularly the lateral recess. With your thumb and fingers in these grooves, flex and extend the elbow. A bulge forming under your fingertips would indicate an elbow effusion. Be careful not to confuse the bulge of the aconeus muscle in the lateral recess as an effusion. For easy demonstration, I have switched over to the right elbow. Starting medially, feel the medial border of the triceps. Palpate for supratrochlear lymph nodes and assess the medial epicondyle and the common flexor tendon for tenderness. These can be tender in medial epicondylitis or golfer's elbow. On the anterior aspect, palpate the biceps and work your way down to the biceps tendon. Check for any swelling or tenderness. Just medial to the biceps tendon, you can feel the brachial pulse. On the lateral aspect, palpate the lateral epicondyle for tenderness, as well as the common extensor tendon. These can be tender in lateral epicondylitis or tennis elbow. Feel for the radial head by pronating and supinating the forearm. It should slip under your fingers. Feel for crepitus or swelling in the radiohumeral joint. Lastly, don't forget to check for bony crepitus. You can do this by cupping the elbow and flexing and extending, as well as supinating and pronating the forearm. Range of movement should be done actively and followed by passive assessment if limitation is detected. Assess flexion. Normal is about 140 to 150 degrees. Full extension is defined as 0 degrees, not 180. Some men may lack 5 to 10 degrees of full extension. You may also see hyperextension, especially in women, up to 10 degrees. Flexion and extension occur at the humeral ulnar joint as well as the humeral radial joint. Assess pronation and supination with the elbows at the side and flex to 90 degrees. This will avoid introducing shoulder movement, which would happen if the elbow is extended. You can use the thumb as a pointer. Have the patient turn the palm down. This is pronation, normally 75 to 90 degrees. From the neutral position, have the patient turn the palm up. This is supination, normally 85 to 90 degrees. Pronation and supination occur at the proximal and distal radio ulnar articulations. The humeroradial joint also allows the radius to rotate on its axis during these movements. If doing passive assessment, remember to assess the end feel. A bony end feel can be found with severe osteoarthritis or prior bony trauma. A soft end feel may indicate ligamentous or tendinous problems or capsular problems at the joint. Power assessment at the elbow can be done by resisted isometric testing. For flexion and extension, stabilize the elbow with one hand. Don't let me pull your arm down. This is flexion power mediated largely by the biceps. Don't let me push your arm in. This is extension power mediated largely by the triceps. For supination and pronation, have the elbow at the side flexed to 90 degrees. 
Don't let me turn your palm down. This is a test of supernation. Don't let me turn your palm up. This is a test of pronation. We will now move on to stability testing of the elbow. To test the medial and lateral collateral ligaments, flex the elbow to about 20 to 30 degrees. This will unlock the olecranon from its fossa. To test the medial collateral ligament, stabilize the elbow with one hand and apply a valgus force. To test the lateral collateral ligament, again stabilize the elbow, but this time apply a varus force. For anterior posterior stability, grasp the forearm with the elbow flexed at 90 degrees. Then push and pull on the humerus. There should be no movement. If movement occurs, this suggests bony destruction. In lateral epicondylitis or tennis elbow, there should be tenderness at the lateral epicondyle and common extensive tendon as we previously demonstrated. To further assess this, you can apply resisted wrist extension. Have the patient extend the elbow, make a fist and cock it backwards. Then have the patient resist you. Don't let me push your hand down. A positive test would be pain at the lateral epicondyle. You can also stress the extensors by pushing down on the hand and wrist. Again, a positive test would be pain at the lateral epicondyle. In medial epicondylitis, there should be tenderness at the medial epicondyle and common flexor tendon, again as we previously demonstrated. To further assess this, have the patient position the arm in a similar position with the wrist flex and fingers extended. Don't let me pull your hand up. A positive test would be pain at the medial epicondyle. You can also stress the flexors by pushing up on the hand and wrist. Again, a positive test would be pain at the medial epicondyle. Lastly, we will assess for cubital tunnel syndrome. This is caused by irritation or entrapment of the ulnar nerve in the cubital tunnel. A common symptom is paresthesia radiating down the ulnar aspect of the forearm into the ring and little fingers. To perform tinnel sign, tap gently on the ulnar nerve and ask the patient for any numbness or tingling spreading into the ring and little fingers. Finally, you can perform the elbow flexion test. Have the patient maximally flex the elbow with the wrist extended and maintain this position for 60 seconds to see if paresthesias develop. Remember to keep the wrist extended so that you would avoid compression of the median nerve at the wrist, which can be a confounder. Thanks for watching. I truly hope this was useful to you. Please be sure to subscribe. There are lots of other videos including other physical exams and injection techniques. Thanks and bye for now.